Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco. Last week we worked on this fantastic area, the Grimandi Center, and boy was it fun to build. Thank you for all of your comments and feedback on that. Much appreciated as always and I am so glad that we are back running and we're on a bit more of a better time scale now so hopefully we can keep this up and go for an episode every two weeks because I am so into this at the moment. Monaco is really becoming more than just my baby at the moment. It is becoming my life and I really am looking forward to expanding and getting up the hillside a little bit more. But before we do that, we have another area to battle. And it's very opposite the Gramandi Centre and it's uh, three areas I guess we're going to be working on today. There's a very fancy sort of museum area here and these hotels which um, are a bit hard to see from this image but they're very unique, very very strange looking hotels which will be fun to build and also this high rise here we're going to be working on. So a nice little segment for us to get our teeth into today and I just really want to complete this section now so we can move inland and start building building up a population um, but there's still a bit more work to do here and we're going to kick things off by using Los Gecko's beautiful Monaco walls to create the foundations for this particular area. Now this section here is actually one of um, one of well one of Monaco's many museums um, and it's a very unique building if you have a look at the picture on the top left hand part of the screen it's a very unique build um, it looks like a fancy house but it's got a very odd sort of front garden to it um, and it's actually as I say it's a museum um, and we're going to try and replicate that as best we can here there is a few buildings we can use um, and we're going to have to use a bit of Ronix's proper um, asphalts and grass textures here to make this area look a bit more realistic so we're going to have a bit of fun here and it's these sort of little projects I love taking on because I've got no idea at the stage of building what it's going to look like you know I've got an image in front of me of what I want it to try and replicate but it's so difficult to think how can I actually get this to look as real as possible and it's a combination of just remembering what's good on the workshop obviously I've collected many assets which suit this area over the years but I do find regularly more and more assets keep popping up in the workshop and I just look at it and think oh that's going to be perfect for Monaco um, and I just add it into the, uh, the, the the asset pack that seems to be growing on the daily which um, isn't ideal but you know when some of these assets come out some of these you can't turn a blind eye to you need to have them in your build because they are just perfect or there's a certain area that you're thinking of and it just suits that down to the ground so it's definitely um, one of those habits which uh, <laughs> it's hard to snap out of and I'd be interested to hear in the comment section below guys are you the same have you got a an issue <laughs> with downloading too many assets how many have you got I know there's some people who have got thousands and thousands and I should really have a look at mine I, I don't want to because uh, I dread to think how many Monaco is up to but um, yeah it's it's an issue <laughs> it's an issue indeed but an issue or not an issue I certainly wouldn't change the game for any possible reason because it's doing exactly what I needed to do and it's helping Monaco grow so it's a result in both equations to be honest but anyway back to the build we are working on making some of these terrain heights um, adjustable here so again as I said earlier using the uh, Monaco walls by uh, Los Gecko and some of these staircases just to really imitate the look of the change of terrain and the sort of function areas that's in and around this garden. Unfortunately it's not going to be functional in the sense that people are going to be walking up and down it but you know there's going to be limitations we can't do everything perfect um, and I'm just going for a visual look here so it's just to give you an idea on this is and I, uh, you know, this is a building, this is what it functions as. You can see where you could go if you were looking up it. And that's what I love about the game. You can really make something come alive without even having actual figurines or, you know, sims walking around or cars around, etc. You don't have to have movement because sometimes you look at places and nothing is happening. So, um, you know, why can't that be the same here in Monaco? So that's the plan for this area here. It would obviously be great in the future to uh, 
easily get people to walk along things and up staircases without glitching through them etc i know there's ways around it i've done a, a tutorial myself before about that um but nonetheless this part of the build was really fun to build um, we really did get the terrain levels working really well and it's these sort of things i just love doing i love finding these challenges i love trying to work out how can i make this look like that for example um, and i know it's um, a copy and a copy and paste i guess project in the sense that we are just imitating what there is in real life monaco but you have to remember you do have to use quite a lot of creativity as well well i certainly am at the moment to um, make certain areas come to life and look as close as possible to what you're you're building and on the subject of building yes the series the new series is starting very soon and i would imagine on social media in the next coming days you'll um, have more of a teaser about where and what the build is all going to be about so i'm hoping that you're all extremely excited it should be a bit easier for me to um well me to control this new series because it's not going to be as um detail heavy well detail it will be but it won't be as copy heavy as it is for monaco um, obviously if i was going to create my own monaco build on the monaco map it wouldn't be monaco of course but it would certainly be a lot quicker than what we're trying to achieve here so hopefully this new series should be good it will also allow me to use my flair as well within the game and you know i can be a bit more free in terms of what assets and props i use rather than make them look like something that's actually there in real life but if we jump back into the build you'll see here we're trying to imitate the fancy hotel area and there's nothing similar to the hotels that actually are here in monaco but what i did do is i used the procedural objects mod um, picked out a few hotels that had the same sort of shapes um, and then combined a few other buildings amongst them as well and it's not perfect but I think it actually looks really good it does certainly look the sort of uniqueness that this building does actually have in Monaco in my build so I'm really happy of how that came about and it's now just a case of detailing this area putting all these fancy plant pots around and sort of creating this um, sort of fancy entrance or well it's not even an entrance it's kind of a front to the hotel um, and just use my imagination here I didn't copy it like for like I just had a bit of fun with the rotations here on the, uh, the planters um, and it is nice to put a bit of your own flair into this build as well because if you copied things like for like all the time it would get extremely boring
So next up, we're gonna create the high rise here and we're using the Move It mod to uh, pretty much copy and paste to make the, the size we want. The thing about Monaco is there's a lot of these high rises, obviously because of the lack of um, space that they have, they have to build upwards rather than outwards. And the buildings on the workshop aren't quite the um, shapes and sizes that Monaco has, which is fine because we can use the uh, Move It mod to copy and paste and place these a little bit better. And you'll see I also was using the um, building color changer as well to make all the faces of the buildings the same color, which unfortunately is an issue if I was to decide to use um, procedural objects for this because it wouldn't actually allow me to do that. So that's an advantage there of using the Move It mod tool over procedural objects. It does add to the prop count, etc. But you know, there's advantages for both in different scenarios. It's just why I love both of those mods so so much. Another advantage of doing the uh, Move It mod for these buildings is we're actually increasing the number of people that are living. Each time we place one down, I think there's another 40 people that are allowed to move into the city. Um, and obviously, one thing we really need to do here is to build up the. Um, the count of people living in Monaco so we can actually make it look like um, well like Monaco I guess getting people walking around lots of cars driving around and I can't wait till we get to that point where the whole place becomes alive that's the only downside that I have noticed with doing a recreation of a place especially with using procedure objects and at the moment not so many buildings we've done a lot of um, a lot of building which doesn't actually relate to people living there. We've done some shopping centers. Um, obviously the harbor was a huge part of the map so far, um, but no people live there. So we're gonna slowly bring the population in and I can't wait to see what it looks like when we have a busy feel around Monaco. I don't think it'll take long. Um, it certainly is slowly growing. Each episode we build, you'll see um, it's a lot easier for me to um, take cinematics with people and things happening um, and eventually it'll be, you know, it won't even be something that you think of, it will just happen naturally because it will run like the game should be running. So that's going to be a nice situation to get to, I can't wait for that. And what we're doing now on camera is just filling out this back area, I mean this area here is quite hard to see on Google Maps, so I've had to use my imagination a little bit here to um, make this into something and I was thinking a nice little car park here at the back perhaps these are commercial buildings on the bottom side where they need to have um, deliveries come in so we put those there um, and then just trying to fill in these gaps you can see here where these two roads meet up there is this dirty big lump <laughs> of, um, of road that we can't really do much with so eventually what I've done here is I've just put down some of the uh, grass decal from Ronix um, just to fill in the gap just to make it look more natural um, I don't like these big strange bumps that the road um, does tend to leave when you do them very close to each other but it works it works for me um, and again we fill it in with bushes anyway so <laughs> everything gets hidden away and from distance it just looks nice Now one thing we haven't really done much with for quite some time is the actual road and the, uh, the layout of this whole area. I've been doing it as we've sort of built really um, and I'm kind of wondering whether we should just have an episode purely on the actual roads themselves and the layout of the area um, which will save time in the long run but it might be a, a bit of a boring episode so let me know in the comment section below. I think I have asked this slightly differently last time. 
Um, just to see if you want an episode where we are purely just laying down the foundation, the roads, the layouts of certain areas. Not the whole of the map, obviously, um, because the way we work with the uh, terrain up the hill isn't really possible. We need to do that bit by bit, but we can certainly map out the area of the roads for the next few areas we're going to be building on. So if you want to see an episode which is purely just road building, um, laying down foundations, and little details here and there but not obviously as much as we have done let me know and i'll do that otherwise it's certainly something we can i can personally just do off camera in preparation for an episode or just a quick time lapse to show you it and another technique i've been learning is trying to artificially make tunnels so as you can imagine monaco has a lot a lot of tunnels used around this area to uh make life easier for everyone because there's not much space on the roads and I mean a lot of the underground car parks are naturally from well they led down from uh, from tunnels and that so I have learned a few ways to do so to make things a bit easier so as you can see here all I've done is off the road itself I just created a tunnel um, as you would do normally and it just seems easier to do it that way and then you can pick it up with the move it mod tool and place it down as you can see the tunnel here looks a lot better than it would have done if we'd done it naturally and also we're able to move it around to see what um, terrain it affects as it happens rather than just plomping it in and hoping for the best so that's certainly a good thing i've uh, learnt from doing so in monaco is getting these tunnels in um, it's a shame there's not a better way of doing tunnels um, especially like pedestrian ones etc because these ones are I mean they look good they're okay but they're not realistic in my opinion um, and there's only one variant we don't have anything else really tunnel wise other than prop ones that we can put over stuff we don't really have a way of doing that so that does make things a little bit more complex and difficult um, when it comes to building tunnels underneath things but also, as I said, I think in the last episode, I'm also going to try and build a um, underground network of rows to try and connect all of these so far empty tunnels up because all the ones I've been using for purely just underground car parking obviously don't go anywhere. They are just there for the aesthetics. But we can certainly take advantage of that by um, making a network underground to connect all of them up because then we'll get some move uh, people moving around from different areas um, which i think will be a pretty cool thing to do so that is leading us very close really to the end of episode 19. what we're going to do here is just going to finish off the detailing section um, we're going to add the shops underneath this area again and as i've already got these placed and ready it's such an easy thing to do now and it just looks beautiful i really do do love that and it just it all just works. I really do think it works really well. Um, and it's a nice variance. There's a nice contrast between each one we're using. We've got luckily um, three people creating very similar types of shops. So obviously together they um, work really well. Um, but yeah, that's going to be very much it for this episode today. Next episode, which will be hopefully in a couple of weeks time, we'll be working... Oh, close to this area we're just going to go a bit further down from this strip and then I think once that's done we are going to move away from this area I want to start working on something completely different once we've got this uh, main strip done because we are actually very close now to the border of Monaco um, so there's not too much further we can go that direction and I've not decided how far we're going to build obviously the intentions are firstly just to purely build Monaco and see how the game reacts or my PC reacts as the case may be um, and then we'll see what we can do beyond that as time progresses but for this episode that's it for me if you're not already make sure you're following me on social media I post up screenshots teasers etc and if you want to support the channel you can do so on patreon for as little as one pound or one dollar other than that guys thank you very much for watching stay tuned for the cinematics and I'll catch you next time Thanks for watching and all the best.